With the release of Unity 2018.1 and now 2, and talks at Unite Berlin, there's a lot of discussion about Unity's new Entity Component System, or ECS. For developers, the question comes up whether to continue using the classic mono-behavior game object model of Unity development, or to start switching things over to ECS. For instructors like myself, it raises a lot of questions about what kind of content to produce. If the trend is to shift to ECS, should new co content focus on that workflow to stay relevant longer? This video isn't going to be about the technical aspects of ECS or how to implement it, but rather how I'm thinking about ECS moving forward. I want to start with why Unity is making this move, then talk about what ECS is and what features it comprises. And finally, I'll talk about where I see game objects fitting into this shining new ECS future. Part 1. Why ECS? Unity development, C-sharp scripting, and programming languages in general live on a spectrum. On one end is control, which can lead to optimization. This is control of memory and processing, which can be used to make a computer run your code as efficiently as possible. On the other side is convenience. This is a combination of human readability, access to useful features, and reduction of maintenance and bookkeeping on the developer's part. For programming languages, we can look at things like machine code, literally ones and zeros, as being the epitome of control, followed by assembly language, then C, which uses things like variables and functions, but also requires allocation of memory and manual referencing, things like that. And then we have C Sharp, which automates a lot of the memory bookkeeping for us. On the farthest end would be something like Scratch or other beginner programming tools that add things like rendering overheads in the interest of accessibility. For the past decade or so, Unity has lived very happily on the convenience side of the spectrum. Easy porting to multiple platforms, a graphical interface, and an asset marketplace are all elements of making the process of making games easy, or at least easier. That convenience always comes at some cost of bloat, included features that you may or may not be using. In the IDE, in the builds, even in the classes there are numerous properties and methods and not all of them get used in every instance. This has worked fine as processors continue to get faster, but in the past few years processor speeds have kind of plateaued and memory access remains even slower. But since the market still wants things to look newer and better and have cooler features and higher frame counts, the trend has naturally shifted back toward optimization. We've seen this with rising interest in shaders, getting the GPU to do more work alongside the CPU, and ECS is another reflection of this effort. In fact, a number of the methods related to ECS, in particular the job system, feel reminiscent of working with allocation in C or even registers in assembly. Unity is getting more out of the same processing power in three main ways. Arranging memory more efficiently, using multiple processor cores, or multi-threading, and producing more optimized code from the existing C-sharp scripts. Which brings us to an important point. The ECS isn't alone in this change. Part 2. The ECS versus the job system. When people talk about ECS in Unity, they're typically actually talking about three things. The entity component system, the job system, and the burst compiler. The burst compiler is kind of its own thing, so we're not going to look at it right now. ECS and the job system work together, and they have some things in common, but they are actually two separate systems. Unity actually rolled out the job system with Unity 2018.1, and ECS arrived in 2018.2, and will be more fleshed out in point three. Both ECS and the job system are very much about stripping away unneeded code and data and features for a more optimized program. The job system is like a switchboard operator for your code. If you design your code in a certain way, a job system can take that code, or iterations of that code, and divide it up among multiple processor cores, so that it can be worked on in parallel. A job only takes in precise data that it needs to execute, so it won't take an entire reference class. Instead, it takes the most simplistic data it can. In fact, things like the transform access struct that a job can take in convert an entire transform class instance into a struct instance with just five properties. It's restrictive, but it can get much faster performance. The entity component system eliminates the entire components, like transforms, altogether, and instead uses individual pieces like position, rotation, and moving to store each piece of data associated with an object. So if you have an object that isn't going to move, all of the code that's associated with moving, which would be automatically included in a transform, doesn't have to be included anymore. On the flip side, though, this means developers have to be a lot more hands-on about what components we want to add. It's like the difference between adding a new cube primitive or having to create an empty game object and adding a mesh filter, a mesh renderer, box collider, etc. To get better optimization, we have to take more control. The other aspect of the entity component system is that it doesn't use game objects as we know them today. We can still use a game object with the game object entity component to build a prefab, 
and this may actually change in the future as entities become more native to Unity. But right now, when we instantiate clones of this game object prefab, we're no longer creating new game objects with components that contain runtime code. Rather, each entity just has some data tied to it, and then systems process those objects with any runtime code. It's a lot like using scriptable objects, but taken to a whole new level. Because of how this separation works, each entity template, called an archetype, can all be packed together in memory and accessed much more quickly than how components are separated in the classic workflow. These implementations are what make the overall ECS workflow more performant, even with many more entities on the screen or many more processes running at the same time. Part 3. Why I'm still using game objects. While I am following developments on the ECS workflow, I am not using it personally and won't be shifting my videos to using it for the time being. That said, I don't want this to come off as bashing ECS or naysaying it, but I want to give a few reasons why game objects still have a place in Unity, at least for this year. First, it is still very early days for ECS. Even with its release in 2018.2, ECS isn't included in the Unity documentation yet. The documentation still lives on GitHub, which tells you it's a work in progress. What's more, I think more great features are going to be added to make ECS more convenient to use. Right now, you can only make entities in the inspector using this game object-based workaround, and I'm sure that's not Unity's endgame with it. Rather, they're using this opportunity to test ECS with developers who are really excited about it and have strong use cases for it. Which brings me to my second point. Not every game needs ECS levels of optimization. The average game doesn't use hundreds of thousands of entities on a screen, or isn't generating dwarf fortress amounts of data at runtime. There are absolutely use cases. High fidelity VR games that need to maintain 90 FPS will benefit from this. And there will be games that rely on these optimizations to make more complex features or mechanics viable. But if I'm making a card game or a retro platformer, I can probably get by fine using game objects right now, especially since the feature set for ECS is still fairly limited. Which is another reason I'm holding off, especially with using ECS in tutorials right now. ECS requires a lot of manual control right now, especially in maintaining references to entities and calling and completing jobs. As an instructor, I still get questions from viewers about things like destroying an instance of an object or making a reference to a class instance. Jumping down to a level of bookkeeping that's closer to writing in C isn't going to benefit new developers, and those who are skilled enough to engage with ECS know where to find the info they need. But once again, this is still early days for ECS, and I know it's where Unity is heading, so I'm sure that Unity will make it more intuitive in time. Eventually, I imagine, there will be new features for making entities that may have a bit more feature bloat on the development end, but will maintain the high levels of optimization for your game builds. And eventually, like how C-sharp went from a language option to the preferred language to the only language to code in Unity, I'm sure ECS will become Unity's primary workflow, and when that happens, I will be making tutorials for it. For now, though, game objects still work, and if you're just getting into game development, they're a useful tool to help make games, so I'll keep using them. Anyway, those are my thoughts on ECS right now. Hope they've given you something to think about, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.